On Monday, a progressive return to on-site classes in Venezuela began amidst the biosecurity measures. Thousands of asylum seekers from Haiti, South America, and Central America set off from Tapachula, Mexico, to the U.S. border. A state of emergency was declared in Sudan following the arrest of the Prime Minister and other officials of the African country. Hello from the headquarters of Telesur English and in Havana, I'm Ray Gomez. This is from the South. On Monday, a progressive return to on-site classes began in Venezuela amid security measures to prevent COVID-19 infections. President Nicolas Maduro urged the sanitary authorities to reinforce the prevention measures in all the educational centers of the country. The head of state indicated that at the same time, the vaccination campaign for children over 12 years of age will begin this October 25th. President Maduro explained that as from November the 1st, scheme to make biosecurity measures from more flexible will begin until December. As of this Monday, on-site classes began in Venezuela. On-site classes returned in Venezuela with absolute biosecurity, having achieved a general control of the coronavirus. As of this Monday, on-site classes began in Venezuela. On-site classes returned in Venezuela with absolute biosecurity, having achieved a general control of the coronavirus. As of this Monday, the vaccination of children over 12 years old and older starts. It's already a noted advantage. This means that in all the high schools, we are going to be vaccinating all the children of the high schools and also to complete 100% of vaccination of the personnel of the educational sector. And China donated another batch of Sinovac vaccines uh, to the Philippines on Sunday to support the country's COVID-19 vaccination campaign. The donation arrived in Manila along with the vaccines of the same brand that the Philippines purchased from China. In a brief statement to reporters at the airport, Chinese ambassador to the Southeast Asian nation, Huang Chilian, said the new vaccine delivery demonstrated the kind of friendship from the Chinese government and people to the Philippines. China has sustained the COVID-19 vaccine supply to the Philippines since the first delivery on February the 28th, allowing it to kick off uh, its vaccination drive on March the 1st. Up to date, over uh, 55 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered, with more than 25 million Filipinos being fully vaccinated. The government aims at to vaccinate up to 70 million people this year. Take it into account the progress and effectiveness of the vaccination process and the prospect that more than 90 percent of the population will be fully vaccinated by next month. Cuban authorities are get ready to open the country's borders as of November 15, 2021. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez Barrio stated the opening will take place when the Caribbean island already has more than 70 percent of its population immunized against COVID-19. The Tuesday, or last Tuesday, Minister of Tourism Juan Carlos Garcia Granda said mandatory PCR tests will not be required for international travelers who are vaccinated, and mandatory quarantine requirements will be lifted for these arrivals as well. For international travelers who are vaccinated, they must present a health passport or international anti-COVID-19 certificate of those vaccines certified by correspondent regulatory agencies. The tourism official also highlighted that the mandatory use of face mask is maintained with the air and port terminals as well as throughout the country. World Health Organization Chief Tadros Ghebreyesus has said the COVID-19 pandemic will be over when the world chooses to end it, adding the tools needed to accomplish this goal are available, but the world has not used those tools well. That 
the pandemic will end when the world chooses to end it. It is in our hands. We have all the tools we need, effective public health tools and effective medical tools. But the world has not used those tools well. We, we have more coming up after this, a very short break. Welcome back. Several thousands of asylum seekers from Haiti, South America, and Central America set up from Tapachula. The latest mass movement of people trying to pass the north through Mexico said that they hope to eventually reach the U.S. border, where the number of asylum seekers trying to gain entry was already hit on new records. Some 3,000 people, including families with young children, began their long journey on foot on Saturday from the city of Tapachula near the Guatemala border toward Mexico's capital. One of the caravan's organizers said that he was leading the group to Mexico City in the protest of uh, the lack of government assistance uh, in the south, where officials have attempted to contain thousands of people and to demand legal documents uh, that would let them move freely in the country. With the presence of Army General Raul Castro, the second plenary session of the Cuban Communist Party concluded on Sunday in Havana. The initiative debated strategies for the improvement of public management and policies for national development. The leaders of the party met to discuss the mechanisms of a change with the people, the improvement of the economic model, and the implementation of new measures for the modernization of the Caribbean nation in the context of the U.S. each. At the meeting, a program for transformation of the political ideas ideological work was approved in order to forge an emancipated and unitary culture, as well as the central report of a plenary, which gathers the most relevant data on the development of the economy and the implementation of the agreements of the eight Congress held between April 16 and 19 of this year. In the United States, uh, goods shortages are worsening amid a slowdown in the supply chain. The nation expects a logistic crisis to extend to year and season. Empty shelves can be seen in specific stores, while ports uh, are working 24 hours a day to mitigate the imbalance. Although the commercial sector is focused on the consequences of the crisis uh, during the upcoming Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas holidays. Analysts and officials agreed that the structural nature of the shutdown could extend the problem throughout the coming year with a marked effect on inflation. In addition, the lack of labor force and the country's outed railroad infrastructure are structural causes of the imbalance. An emergency zone was a glory around a blazing cargo ship of, of Western Canada after containers carrying more than 50 tons of dangerous chemical caught on fire. The Canadian Coast Guard said 16 crew members were evacuated from the Zim Kingston ship of, uh, of Victoria, British Columbia. The fire was caused by a combustible a chemical power or powder spelling from containers uh, that were damaged in a storm as a ship arriving from South Korea approached at the entrance uh, to Strait of Wind de Fuca. At the time, about 40 of the ship's containers tumbled into the Pacific Ocean in rough seas. According to a navigation warning sent to all ships in the area, a one-mile exclusion zone was in effect around the container ship in the vicinity of Constance Bank due to danger of falling containers. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has told his foreign minister to expel the ambassadors of 10 countries, including France, Germany, and the United States, who had appealed for the release of jailed activists. Seven of the ambassadors represent Turkey's NATO allies, and the expulsions would open uh, the deepest rift with the West in Erdogan's administration. The envoys issued a highly unusual joint statement last Monday, saying the uh, continued detention of Parisian-born Osman Kavala 
was not good for the country. The ambassadors of Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Norway, Sweden, Finland, New Zealand, and the United States call for a just and speedy resolution to Kabbalah's case and uh, for his urgent release. Osman Kabbalah has uh, been in prison since late uh, 2017, charged with financing nationwide protests in 2013 and with involvement in the 2016 failed coup. And according to preliminary information, President of Uzbekistan, Shavak Mirziyoyev, has won the re-election with 90 percent of the vote. Official results are due to be announced before October 31st. But Mirziyoyev is already set to serve a second five-year term in the Central Asian nation. Turnout for the vote is said to have been 80 percent. Mirziyoyev, 64, faced the other four candidates in the race for the presidency of Uzbekistan. Russian President Vladimir Putin called the Uzbek leader to congratulate him on a convincing victory, the Kremlin press service said on October 25. Activists are fighting for the rights of sex workers are gathered in Venice on Sunday to participate in the project 20 Years of Activism under Red Umbrellas. The project takes place uh, until October 30th. The rally marked the 20th anniversary from the first demonstration organized by the Committee for the Civil Rights of Sex Workers, led by activist Carla Curzo during the Venice Biennale in 2001. Holding Red Umbrellas, a symbol of protection from abuses, violence, and prejudices, activists have replicated their march on Sunday, walking from Santa Lucia rail station through iconic uh, Venice streets. During the week, activists plan to hold meetings and other initiatives uh, to discuss uh, the conditions and rights of sex workers 20 years after they started their fight and gave birth uh, to the movement. Today we are doing this demonstration because it is 20 years since the committee has used the umbrella thanks to the artist and art of today. The red umbrella has become the symbol of the claim for the rights of sex workers, for the rights of women, transgender and migrant sex workers. We have more stories coming up after this financial break. Welcome back. In Sudan, the head of Sovereign Council, Abdel Fattah al burhan announced the dissolution of the transitional government and declared a state of emergency following the arrest of the Prime Minister and other officials of the African country. The Prime Minister, Abdallah Hamdag, was arrested and transferred to an unknown place for refusing the coup, according to the Ministry of Information, which is still under the control of its supporters. On Monday, thousands of people took to the streets of Khartoum and other cities of the country in rejection of the political situation. At least 12 people were injured uh, during the repression of a demonstration in front of the army headquarters. What the military is doing now is a big betrayal to the citizens and all levels. It's important that every individual Sudanese citizen add and take to the streets to not let any armed vehicle move. What the military is doing now is a big betrayal to the citizens and all levels. It's important that every individual Sudanese citizen add and take to the streets to not let any armed vehicle move. The latest coup comes hours after the visit of the U.S. envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feldman. On October 23 to 24, the U.S. diplomat met with Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdak and several members of his cabinet, as well as with the chairman of the Sovereign Council, Abdul Fattah al burhan During his meeting with the Prime Minister, Feldman reaffirmed the continued support of the White House for Sudan's transition to democracy. Also, the cabinet's arrest comes a month after the Sovereign uh, Council, the civil military transitional government established in August 2019, denounced a failed coup and the arrest of dozens of coup officers. According 
According to the authorities, these had allegedly remained under surveillance and were arrested as soon as they undertook action. In mid-April 2019, another coup put an end to the 30-year rule of President Omar Bashir after several months of protests that resulted in dozens of deaths and hundreds of wounded. In other news, the Israeli occupation forces offered tenders to build about 1,355 new settlement units in occupied West Bank territories. The occupation regime intends to approve the construction for over 3,100 new units in the occupied territories of the West Bank and Jerusalem, in addition to other Palestinian territories under Israeli control. The Israeli NGO Peace Now accused Prime Minister Naftali Bennett of leading an annexionist government, which follows in the footsteps of previous Netanyahu's executive. Movements for the liberation of Palestine and policy and respect for the sovereignty of Israeli occupation troops are once again raided the Gaza Strip on Monday. They open intermittent fire and force farmers to leave their plots. Military vehicles advance towards the east of the town of Al Fuhari in southern Gaza and raise a large area of agricultural land. Two million Palestinians are living in the coastal enclave, which has been under an Israeli blockade for 12 years, in addition to repeated attacks that have severely damaged much of its infrastructure. In Syria, several army and Shiite militia posts uh, located in the southern province of Qunaitra were attacked by multiple Israeli Air Force missiles. Local media informed that, that the impact caused the damage to infrastructure, but that there are possible casualties among the Syrian army on uh, the Allied militia. The strike that took place at the location four kilometers from Damascus. Authorities assured that, that they are on the alert for another potential aggression. On October 13th, the four Israeli aircraft bombarded a chemical factory in the Syrian province of Homs. With these attacks, Israel seeks to destabilize Syria and obstruct the Arab country from the recovery of the war imposed by the West and terrorist groups since 2011. Libyan electoral authorities announced that the nomination process for the presidential elections next December will begin in November. According to the head of the High Electoral Commission, Ismail al -Siyah, the registration will begin in mid-November when the technical and logistical preparations are completed. The elections are an important step in efforts to end a decade-long violence and instability in the African country following the NATO-led military intervention in 2011 that ended with the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi that turned Libya into a failed state. The first round of the presidential elections is uh, scheduled for December 24, while the second round, uh, along with the parliamentary elections, uh, will be held at the later date uh, yet to be defined. The category to Hurricane Rick made landfall in the Mexican state of Guerrero on Monday. According to forecast, it will degrade to a tropical storm over Michoacan, and as it moves, it will originate extraordinary punch of rains and may cause an increase in the levels of rivers and streams, landslides and floods. Intense wind gusts and high waves are also expected to on the coast of Michoacan, Guerrero, and Colima, but those conditions will diminish during the rest of the day and evening. Mm -hmm. 
More than 140,000 homes in the state of California remained without power due to torrential rains in the wake of the atmospheric river weather, the phenomenon, and the bump cyclone. Local media reported that the rains uh, intensified uh, this Sunday, caused the floating and links lights in several public roads, as well as electrical failures that affected more than 140,000 homes out of more than 12 million registered in California. No structural damage has been reported. Nevertheless, authorities called on the population to take precautions. And six weeks have already passed since uh, the eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano on the Canary Island of La Palma. Some uh, 852 hectares uh, have been affected by the lava, also intermediate and deep seismic intensified, which caused at least 84 tremors in La Palma. Three of them registered with 3.5 magnitude. Two others were confirmed in Fuencaliente and a third in Villa del Mazo. The populations of Los Llanos de Aridane, El Paso, and Tazagorda see improvements in the quality of thermal invasion inversion due to the dispersion of the toxic gases. We've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Telezor English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telezor English, I'm Ray Gomez. Thank you for watching.